ഹലോ വെൽക്കം ടു ലൈ എക്സലൻസ് ഇൻ അവർ റീക്യാപ് പ്രോഗ്രാം വി ആർ ഡിസ്കസിംഗ് മന്ത്ലി കറണ്ട് അഫയർസ് വീഡിയോസ് ഇൻ ദിസ് വീഡിയോ ലെറ്റ് എസ് ഡിസ്കസ് പാർട്ട് ത്രീ ഓഫ് ഫെബ്രുവരി ട്വൻറ്റി ട്വൻറ്റി വൺ കറണ്ട് ഇഷ്യൂസ് പി ഡി എഫ് ഓഫ് ദിസ് വീഡിയോ ഈസ് അവൈലബിൾ ഇൻ ദ ഡിസ്ക്രിപ്ഷൻ ഇഫ് യു വോണ്ട് ടു റൈറ്റ് ടെസ്റ്റ് സീരീസ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ദി മന്ത്ലി കറണ്ട് അഫയർസ് വീഡിയോസ് യു ക്യാൻ എൻറോൾ ത്രൂ ദ ലിങ്ക് ഗിവൻ ബിലോ ലെറ്റ് എസ് സ്റ്റാർട്ട് വിത്ത് സയൻസ് ആൻഡ് ടെക്നോളജി ഇഷ്യൂസ് ഫസ്റ്റ് വൺ ഈസ് റെഗുലേഷൻ ഓഫ് ക്രിപ്റ്റോ കറൻസി recently government has said that it is going to regulate the cryptocurrency and it is trying to bring in a bill to regulate it cryptocurrency is a digital currency it's a it's secured by cryptography cryptography and cryptocurrencies are decentralized networks based on blockchain technology important blockchain technology governments are concerned about cryptocurrencies because these are not regulated by any government these are decentralized not centralized and not regulated by the central banks that's why and the value of cryptocurrency is very very volatile that is why it is very much vary about it that's why rbi in 2018 has brought in a circular to asking all the banks to not to serve for the for the companies which are trading in cryptocurrencies but this was kept aside by supreme court and it said there need a comprehensive policy for regulating the cryptocurrency now let us briefly understand what is a cryptocurrency cryptocurrency is a digital money stored in virtual networks consisting of thousands of nodes each node is made up of many computers all the nodes are connected to one another through internet and transactions are handled by each of these nodes and transactions of cryptocurrency happen through blockchain technology information is sent in the network to all the nodes and each node validated that is a block of information is added to every node which we call it as ledger ledger is a database to which the block of information gets added so when all these all these nodes validate then only transaction happen that is how cryptocurrencies work this is the schematic diagram of it let's say if someone sends a request that requests moves through the network these are all the nodes nodes means computers that are connected to the network each node validates after the validation this block of information is added to ledger when this is added and validated to the validated by the nodes transaction happen and this person receives the money or whatever document whatever so cryptocurrencies they don't have any intrinsic value no physical form supply is did not determined by the central bank it is determined as per the crypto mining in this context world of the prices of cryptocurrencies are very very volatile so that is why many countries are trying to bring in amendments to the regulations and some countries are trying to bring in central bank digital currency cbdc central bank digital currency even rbi is thinking of bringing in central bank digital currency next issue is hope mission uae is hope mission hope mission is the mars mission of uae and uae became the first arab country to send a spacecraft to mars objective of this particular hope mission is to study the martian climate on daily and seasonal cycles to observe the mars weather phenomena including its massive dust storms to have interaction between to study the interaction between upper and lower layers of martian atmosphere to explore the connections between today's martian weather and the ancient climate of red planet these are the objectives of hope mission and this is going to already it had is reached mars and it is going to function for next 2 years next is perseverance perseverance is Ma- latest mars mission of nasa this has sent perseverance rover and ingenuity helicopter this mission perseverance mission is designed to better understand the geology of mars and to seek the signs of ancient life signs of ancient life some of the objectives include assess the ancient habitability of mars planet demonstrate the technology for future robotic and human exploration this perseverance has made oxygen out of the co2 in the martian atmosphere this is ingenuity helicopter it has taken autonomous flight these are two significant achievements of perseverance mission of nasa let us briefly understand the equipments placed in perseverance mission moxi moxi produces oxygen from co2 
this is the robotic arm this is the x-ray spectrometer this is ultraviolet spectrometer and we have mat scam z this is super cam imager and surface radars are there weather stations these are all placed in this and mars helicopter which is known as ingenuity is carried to the carried with the perseverance and it has taken autonomous flight recently and comparing earth and mars mars has two major satellites phobos and deimos and earth has only one average temperatures of earth earth is 13 degrees centigrade but average temperatures of mars is minus 62 degrees these are the some of the points that we have already discussed please go through it once this one is important perseverance landed near zezero crater zezero crater is the landing site next issue is liberalization of geospatial policy recently ministry of science and technology has released new guidelines for geospatial sector what is the meaning of geospatial data geo earth spatial location data earth location data about various objects events phenomena we locate it on the surface of the earth by its coordinates and attributes temporal or time dimension time location and specific characteristic of it these are recorded such information is known as geospatial information this is important for general purposes and scientific purpose let's say aircraft uh, let's say if a manned space mission if it wants to land in a particular place we need proper geospatial data yes or no such scientific applications are there other than that geospatial data it can be involved in various areas such as roads localities so it it can gather data regarding all these things in the past decade there's an increase in the use of geospatial data in day to day life various food apps let's say swiggy zomato and e-commerce apps they are using geospatial data is or no so in this context the new guidelines they say that geospatial data sector was highly regulated earlier now it is deregulated anyone can do survey mapping and building applications based on geospatial data they don't require any prior approval and for indian entities there's complete deregulation with prior approvals prior approval security clearances and licenses only the foreign companies they need prior approval in case if they are collecting geospatial data of india next issue is mission indradhanush 3.0 recently intensified mission indradhanush 3.0 was, was launched to cover children and pregnant women who missed the routine vaccination during covid-19 pandemic what is intensified mission indradhanush this is this is renamed version of universal immunization program under universal immunization program 12 for 12 vaccine preventable diseases child young children and pregnant women are covered with the vaccines so this uh, this universal immunization program is renamed as mission indradhanush after that intensified mission indradhanush in intensified mission indradhanush this is the third year that is by 3.0 it is to strengthen and re-energize the program and achieve the full immunization cover of all children and pregnant women at a rapid pay phase it was launched in 2014 now intensified mission and rather than one two three we are in third stage its goal is to immunize all immunize with all available vaccines up to two years of age of children and the pregnant women what are the diseases that are covered under universal immunization program now we call it as intensified mission indradhanush program 12 vaccine preventable diseases including diphtheria pertussis whooping cough and tetanus polio tuberculosis hepatitis b meningitis pneumonia hemophilus influenza b japanese encephalitis rota virus pneumococcal conjugate vaccine measles rubella vaccine these are the 12 vaccines again as japanese encephalitis and uh, hemophilus influenza type b only in selected districts vaccinations are provided other 10 are provided throughout the country next issue is covax facility this facility is jointly led by gavi global alliance for vaccination and immunization coalition for epidemic preparedness and innovation and world health organization this covax facility works in partnership with various developed and developing countries to promote vaccine equity 
there's an initiative called access to covid-19 tools act act accelerator this was launched in the year 2020 by world health organization european commission and france in response to covid-19 pandemic this act accelerator it has three components one vaccines for that we have covax facility two therapeutics three diagnostics under covax facility these organizations they buy various vaccines from various vaccine manufacturers they supply it to the underdeveloped countries especially african countries and other low income countries to promote vaccine equity next issue is draft national strategy on blockchain recently our ministry of electronics and information technology has released draft national policy on blockchain this promotes national level blockchain framework that means blockchain technology can be used for the national development there are potential applications of blockchain technology in the national interest what are they let us understand before that first let us see what is a blockchain technology blockchain technology we have discussed about cryptocurrency earlier blockchain technology is a distributed ledger technology that was first introduced in 2009 this technology eliminates the requirement of centralized entity or third party directly through the network one individual can transact with other individual can send the information to other individual but there are nodes in the network these nodes they have to validate the information they store the information in the form of ledger this network of uh, nodes uh, uh, which store the information which is called as block is known as blockchain network this kind of blockchain network transaction has many applications one in property record management pharmaceutical supply chain farm insurance public service delivery e voting vehicle life cycle management electronic health record management these are some of the applications of blockchain technology in the national interest blockchain technology is very famous for cryptocurrency but cryptocurrency is not the only application the above are the other important applications of blockchain technology but there is an issue with blockchain technology what is that the this contradicts the principle of right to be forgotten why in a network in a blockchain network if an information is sent it cannot be corrupted it's a decentralized technology more security will be there distributed ledgers are there consensus will be there faster settlements are there and blockchain technology if information is sent it is immutable that means once the information is sent in the network it cannot be changed or it cannot be removed but under right to be forgotten information especially personal information which is misleading or embarrassing or irrelevant or outdated can be removed can be requested to be removed under various data privacy law such as europe's general data protection regulation law and even in india's draft personal protection bill they have recommended for right to be forgotten blockchain technology transactions and use of blockchain for transmitting the information this negates this principle of right to be forgotten next issue is nasams national advanced surface to air missile defense system national advanced surface to air missile system this is an air missile system of usa india and usa made an agreement under which usa is going to sell this system to india what is this it is called as integrated air defense weapon system that means let's say if there is any incoming missile that is coming into india's airspace our radars and other equipment it detects it and it, the information will be sent to the communication control system from this control system commands will be given missile will be launched counter missile will be launched this destroys this incoming missile in the air itself this is known as missile defense system and this nasams is an integrated air defense weapon system and it is deployed around washington dc we are going to deploy it in india too this integrated air defense weapon system includes radars launchers targeting and guidance systems advanced medium range air to air missiles and stringer missiles and related equipment and support this is not the only one india already had prithvi advanced defense system s400 system we have ordered from russia russia is going to deliver them by this year end 
we have deployed akash defense system and we have ordered for nasasm layer of uh, defense system and we have also requested israel to sell barak 8 layer of defense system so these are all missile shield that we have we have ordered for right this is not the only one we have few already and we have ordered for few s400 is the most powerful one by this year and the russia is going to deliver some of the s400 defense systems to india keeping in mind the lac conflict already china has s400s now we are procuring from russia see this is how it functions let's say enemy missile has come up into airspace radar detected control system sent a signal and missile firing unit fired it and this intercepts this particular missile destroys it in the mid air that is how defense missile system works next issue is draft humans in space policy for india 2021 humans space policy 2021 is prepared by department of space technology and one of the objective of this policy is to promote a uh, human space flight in the low earth orbit low earth orbit we have low earth orbit medium earth orbit high earth orbit so this plan as of now promotes for short term plan for human space flight that is in the low earth orbit we have to go for human space flight already we have gaganyaan system it is going to be india's first man main mission the target year to launch is 2022 we are going to launch and launch a crew module This crew module is going to orbit around the earth for 5 to 7 days and splash back to the coast. We recover this module and the astronauts. That's Gaganyaan mission. We are going to launch it in the year 2022. This humans in space policy is trying to promote the human space flights further. This policy seeks to facilitate startups and local industry to build technologies for the human space program. ISRO has set up two member team to study the technologies needed for this mission right gaganyaan is going to be india's first human space mission this policy promotes for more such human missions human space flight missions these are the types of orbits by altitude orbits are categorized into low earth orbit medium earth orbit and high earth orbit please go through your snt space technology chapter revise the orbits types of orbits this is very very important types of orbits next issue is 5g technology recently parliamentary committee has said that deployment of 5g technology in india is going to be delayed initially it was said that by 2018 we are going to deploy this 5g technology but it is going to further delayed what are the reasons for this delay uncertainty in the spectrum auctions high reserve price of the spectrum inadequate development of test cases with regard to 5g low reach of optical fiber and deficient backhaul capacity these are some of the causes for delay in the deployment of 5g technology 5g uses upgraded lte long term evolution mobile broadband network 5g technology is essentially to provide higher internet speeds of 20 gbps speed that means latency levels latency means delay in the receiving of and sending the signal latency levels are minuscule minimal that's why it is called as real time network technology there are many names for this real time network technology and this is also known as network for iot iot means internet of things network for iot because it enables the internet of things network and this 5g technology can be deployed with various types of technology such as millimeter wave technology millimeter wave technology small cell networker technology multiple input multiple output technology mimo we call it as mimo technology these are some of the technologies with which 5g network can be deployed and this network is known as real time network or network for iot already many countries usa south korea japan china they have rolled out 5g mobile services these are the five generations of mobile communication technology fifth generation mobile communication technology it connects the devices that is by interconnected devices sensors and systems for customs governments and businesses this is one of the major applications of 5g technology 5g network it provides for mobile broadband services machine to machine communication 
it has reliable low latency and other technologies are there that's why it enables iot it it is used for communication entertainment internet it is used for retail shopping manufacturing automotive medical sector infrastructural sector and other sectors are there 5g technology integrates all other technologies next issue is genetically modified crops in india recently food safety and standards authority of india it has said that from march 1st onwards all the imported major food crops they need to have certified as non gm cum genetically modified free certificate non gm cum gm cert free certificate and it has also mentioned that adventitious presence adventitious means minuscule presence of gmos um, pr- might be there so till 1% it is allowed of more than 1% it is not allowed adventitious presence means in the non gm crops certain unintentional or incidental presence of trace amounts of gm material might be there that's why it is allowed till 1% in 2018 center for science and environment it has mentioned that out of 65 food products 35 from india 35 imported from other countries so they they are likely to contain genetically modified crops around 32 percentage of the both the products they were found with genetic modified ingredients gm ingredients now let us understand how gm crops are allowed in india and what are the gm crops that are there in india gm crops were commercially cultivated ar- around the world in 1996 In India BT cotton is the first GM crop that is allowed and it is the only GM crop that is allowed for commercial cultivation we have genetic engineering and appraisal committee this is the nodal agency that provides for approvals for GM crops this functions under ministry of environment forest and climate change GM mustard BT brinjal likewise there are other gen- genetically modified crops as of now they are not allowed because these two are food crops so as we don't have clear information on the effectiveness of gm food crops that is why we have not allowed them indigenous transgenic varieties of brinjal hybrids have been developed indigenous indigenously gm mustard thara mustard hybrid dmh11 these were also developed indigenously by delhi university these cases are pending with the gac next issue is national hydrogen energy mission recently in india's budget 2020 2021 and it has proposed for national green energy mission this was formally announced recently cabinet has approved for this particular mission that's why it was in news this mission national hydrogen energy mission emphasizes on green hydrogen see there are different types of hydrogens brown hydrogen green hydrogen and then blue hydrogen three major types so what are these types to produce hydrogen fuel we use a process known as electrolysis for this in this we use water and we separate hydrogen from this it requires energy or electricity if we use coal based energy we call that hydrogen as brown hydrogen if we use renewable energy we call that hydrogen as green hydrogen if we use others such as uh, steam etc we use that as a blue hydrogen so likewise how we extract hydrogen through which energy source based on that three types of hydrogens are are there green hydrogen means we use renewable energy to extract hydrogen through electrolysis process if we use green hydrogen what are the benefits it's a clean source of energy so it helps in decarbonization of economy two it has potential to transform the transportation hydrogen can be used as a fuel cell and also in the combustion engines we can use it so it it makes the transportation sector to go for a net zero carbon footprint and it channelizes the renewable energy towards for producing greenhouse uh, green, less greenhouse emitting sources such as hydrogen fuel etc these are some of the advantages of green hydrogen energy next issue is vigyan jyoti scheme Second phase of Vigyan Jyoti program was launched recently on International Day of Women and Girl Science. Vigyan Jyoti scheme is to promote awareness among the girl children and girls to enter into STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. In STEM areas, especially at the higher level, number of women 
who are who are doing phds etc are less that is why to promote women's participation in the field of science and technology the department of science and technology has launched this vigyan jyoti scheme this is the second year under that 50 this 50 more districts earlier 50 district now 50 more districts across the country are selected to promote to promote uh, to encourage women to take up stem areas next issue is data intelligence unit or digital intelligence unit recently ministry of communication has decided to set up digital intelligence unit or data intelligence unit that means it takes the unsolicited commercial communication from that it compiles and gathers the intelligence in cases of any financial fraud etc it it observes the digital payment space and it gathers the intelligent such unit is known as digital intelligence unit this tries to coordinate with various law enforcement agencies financial institutions telecom service providers and it investigates and provides the intelligence and we have telecom commercial communications customer preference regulations 2018 this regulates the unsolicited commercial communication in india what is this unsolicited commercial communication unsolicited commercial communication or spam it means emails or mobile messages that advertise products and services to large group of recipients without prayer request or consent issue of un un unsolicited commercial communication is one of the major areas of concern for telecommunication telecom ministry and troy telecom regulatory authority of india from time to time telecom operators are fined for not stopping ucc unsolicited commercial communication next issue is star dust 1.0 recently american company blue shift it has manufactured it it has manufactured a rocket which functions with which functions fully with the biofuels biofuel is cheaper and it is less and it is more environment friendly so this stardust one is a launch vehicle that is a vehicle suited for the student and budget low budget payload such as cube sats nano satellites etc this particular space launch is significant because of its use of biofuel next issue is chandrayaan 3.0 chandrayaan 1 moon mission it was launched in 2008 it has provided conclusive data on moons um, a presence of water on the moon's poles chandrayaan 2 was launched and this was this aimed to land near the lunar southern pole south pole but as the lander mission has failed we could not only orbiter is moving around the moon now we are going to launch chandrayaan 3 where we are not going to place the orbiter we are going to send only lander and rover we are going to use chandrayaan 2 orbiter uh, to communicate with the lander and rover now in this context why chandrayaan 2 has failed it is because our mission control was unable to control the speed of it at at very low height when it is near to the ground when it is near to a moon's surface we could not control its speed that is why now that is why in chandrayaan 3 we are going to place four throttleable engines only unlike five engines in chandrayaan 2 and additionally chandrayaan 3 lander will also be equipped with laser doppler velocimeter velocimeter very very important chandrayaan 3 lander will be equipped with laser doppler velocimeter what is this this is the technique of using doppler shift in a laser beam to measure the velocity in a transparent or semi transparent fuel flows the measurement with laser doppler anemometry is absolute and linear velocity and it requires pre calibration so it can be precisely land over the surface that is why we are going to use laser doppler velocimeter in chandrayaan 3.0 next issue is solar risk mitigation initiative we have climate change and related risk how do we use solar energy to reduce the risk or to mitigate the risk of climate change for that world bank energy sector management assistance program in partnership with uh, francis uh, agents francis d development international renewable energy agency international solar alliance they have developed solar risk mitigation initiative 
to address the climate change related con- concerns and it follows an unique approach that offers development and finance of climate financing for one technical assistance two for the public investment three for the risk mitigation instruments that means climate change is reality we can't escape it now we need to reduce the risk of it for that we can invest in renewable energy such as solar so how much are we investing what are the developments to deal all that this initiative known as solar risk mitigation initiative has come up next issue is acute encephalitis syndrome aes recently there's a case suspected case of acute acute encephalitis syndrome in muzaffarpur of bihar that's why it was in news acute encephalitis syndrome which is also known as chamki fever or lichi virus is an umbrella term that is used for infections that are caused that causes the inflammation or irritation or smell, swelling of the brain it can be caused by viruses bacteria fungi and range of other other agents acute encephalitis syndrome uh, syndrome it has symptoms of fever change in the mental status and a new an onset of seizures and children below the age of 15 years are highly vulnerable for this national vector bond disease control program in india has set up a surveillance network and it specifically focuses on japanese encephalitis japanese encephalitis is a vaccine preventable disease under universal immunization program which is now called as intensified mission indradhanush for japanese encephalitis free vaccinations are provided in this context surveillance with regard to acute encephalitis proper treatment is necessary next issue is kapila campaign kalam program for intellectual property literacy awareness kapila full form is kalam program for intellectual property literacy and awareness awareness intellectual property for any innovation or artistic works etc intellectual property rights are granted and many of the innovators they are innovating but they are not filing the patents under the iprs in this context to promote the iprs government has brought in this kapila campaign this is one of the awareness campaigns it was this campaign was started in the year 2020 recently 46000 approximately users have registered under this program objective of kapila scheme includes creating awareness regarding intellectual property rights in higher educational institutions enabling ip protection of inventions originating from faculty or students of higher educational institutions development of credit course on intellectual property rights training programs on ipr for faculty and students sensitization and development of ip filing systems intellectual property rights are of various types such as copyrights patents gi tags trademarks likewise there are many types of iprs are there next let us understand governance related issues first issue is postponement of census census 2021 was postponed to 2022 due to covid-19 census in india is a decennial process that means it is conducted once in 10 years under ministry of home affairs office of registrar general and census commissioner it conducts the census operation to conduct the census operation it takes the help of state governments census it provides information on size distribution socio economic demographic and other characteristic of india's population census was first started under british viceroy lord mayo but synchronous census was started in the year 1881 since then once in every 10 years we are conducting census census data provides the information on demography economic activity literacy housing urbanization scheduled caste scheduled tribes related information and language here if you observe carefully this provides information on scheduled tribes and scheduled crop caste not other caste that's why few of the obc few of the obc leaders are asking for socio economic caste census which delineates the uh, other other backward classes also next issue is pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana central government's maternity benefit scheme which is known as pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana it has crossed 1.75 crore eligible beneficiaries till 2020 that's why it was in this pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana 
it it is run by the government of india it was introduced in the year 2017 and it is implemented by ministry of women and child development it is a conditional cash transfer scheme for pregnant and lactating women of 19 years of age and above it provides partial wage compensation to women for wage loss during the childbirth and child care post delivery and to pro- it provides for conditions of safe delivery and good nu- good nutrition and feeding practices among the women in the year 2013 under national food security act cash maternity benefit of 6000 was announced now this is implemented under pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana that means beneficiaries under pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana are given 6000 rupees as the cash maternity benefit next issue is major ports authorities bill parliament has passed major ports authorities bill major port authorities bill replaces port authorities bill 1963 which regulates the 12 major ports in india this new act this uh, this would take into account entry of private players and ppp models in the port sector this has provisions in resolving the disputes with the private players and it would be incorporated into the act and this new law in, uh, enhances the overall energy oh, sorry overall efficiency of the major ports which collectively handles 699 million tons of cargo in last one year now this bill is applicable to major ports of chennai cochin jawaharlal nehru port kandla kolkata mumbai new mangalore marmagova chidambaram port visakhapatnam port this bill provides for creation of board of major ports authority for each major port and these boards they replace the existing port trusts along with promoting private investments pppps and increase in the efficiency of the major ports board of port authority it uses certain part of fund for providing social benefits such as building infrastructure such as education health housing skill development facilities in the port area this can be seen as one of the initiatives to promote sagar mala program in india next issue is third ministerial conference on road safety third ministerial conference on road safety in stockholm wherein it has brought in the stockholm declaration it was organized last year with the participation of more than 80 countries theme of this particular conference is achieving global goals global sustainable development goals 2030 it intends to bring down the road sa- bring the road safety and it intends to reduce the mortality due to road accidents it is to save the lives now in this third ministerial conference brazilia declaration and its goals were discussed that is why it was a news what is this brazilia declaration on road safety it was signed during the second global conference on road safety through brazilia conference countries have planned to achieve the sustainable development goal 3.6 by 2020 that is to half the number of global deaths and injuries from the road traffic and un has declared 2010 and 20 as the decade of action for road safety brazilia declaration highlights certain strategies such as to reduce the to reduce the deaths and to increase the road safety it promotes strategies such as improvement in the laws and enforcement making roads safer through infrastructural modifications ensuring vehicles are equipped with life saving technologies such as safe belu safety balloons enhancing emergency trauma care center and india is part of brazilia declaration india has committed to reduce reduce the fatalities next issue is one rank one pension scheme under one rank one pension scheme it was said that for every 5 years review will be done so the review time was um, june 2020 from then onwards review was not done with regard to this by the way what is one rank one pension scheme this implies uniform pension to the personal based on rank and length of service irrespective of date of retirement whenever they might retire so irrespective of date of retirement they want uniform pension government had implemented the this particular measure from 2015 onwards armed for- forces personnel who retired till 2014 are covered under it implementation of this scheme was based on Ko- koshiari committee 
this pension will be refixed for all the pensioners retiring in the same rank with the same length of service as the average of minimum and maximum pension in 2013 pension will be refixed or reviewed for every 5 years so it started in 2015 that means i have to review in 2020 it's not been reviewed that's why it's one news and one rank one pension scheme is not applicable to uh, people who who, are, who has taken the voluntary retirement next issue is arbitration and conciliation amendment bill 2021 Recently, Parliament has passed this bill. Arbitration Con Council of India was brought in under this particular act. Arbitration Council Act introduced a concept called a, a concept of Arbitration Council of India. It is established with by the notification of central government. Judge of Supreme Court or CJ of High Court or Judge of any High Court would be part of this. Chairperson is appointed by the central government in consultation with the Chief Justice of India. This bill checks the misuse of fly-by-night operators who take advantage of the law to get favorable awards by fraud. That means they go to arbitration, they just get a verdict, they just move away. The other party is at the receiving end. That's why this bill was passed to bring about parity among all stakeholders in the arbitration process. In the arbitration process, all the parties involved should get the benefit. And it checks the misuse of the provisions under Arbitration and Conciliation Act. And it would save the taxpayers money by holding those accountable, uh, accountable who have chiffoned of the money illegally. That is Arbitration and Conciliation Amendment Bill 2021 which was passed by the Parliament. Next issue is Pradhana Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana. Ministry of Earth Sciences has rolled out draft blue economy policy. To promote blue economy, fishery sector is one of the major components. To promote fishery sector, we have this major scheme known as Pradhana Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana. First, let us understand what is this Pradhana Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana and let us also understand what is this draft blue economy policy. We have explained about draft blue, poly blue economy in our economy related current issues of this month. Please go through it once. Now, recently, the aims of this particular blue economy policy is to enhance the GDP through blue economy. Blue economy consists of economic activities depending upon marine resources. It is to improve the lives of coastal communities, to preserve the marine biodiversity, to maintain national security of marine areas and resources. That is the object of this particular draft policy. Now under that we have this Pradhana Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana. What is this Matsya Sampada Yojana? This program is to enhance the fish production by additional 70 lakh tons by 2024 and 25. It is to double the incomes of fisher and fisher farmers. It is to reduce the post harvest losses by 20 to 25 percent from 20 to 25 percent to 10 percent. It is to generate additional, in, additional employment of 55 lakhs through direct and indirect employment opportunities. Next, let us understand environment and disaster management related current issues. First issue is global warming and Himalayan water scarcity. Global warming is causing ice melt of glaciers. Himalayas are called as third pole region because apart from Arctic and Antarctic regions, Himalayan and Hindu Kush regions, these have permanent glaciers, permanent ice covered glaciers. So in this context, Himalayan mountains, they are also experiencing fast snow melting because of global warming. So what happens initially when the glaciers melt, they, they, uh, they lead to a lot of uh, floods. After some time, it leads to water scarcity. Many countries including India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, they are dependent upon Himalayan rivers, Himalayan rivers for the water, for irrigation and drinking water. In this context, fast melting of glaciers is a concern. Gangotri Glacier of Himalayas is one of the largest Himalayan mountains and it is source of the river Ganga and most important source of fresh water and electricity in India and Bangladesh. So melting of glaciers leads to water scarcity. These are some of the points related to uh, Himalaya and cl impact of uh, climate change on Himalayas. Please go through it once. Hindu Kush Himalayan region and the overview of this important. 
Next issue is Chamoli flash floods. Chamoli district of UK has seen flash floods in this context. This district is famous for Chipko movement. So let us understand what is this Chipko movement. Chipko movement is non-violent, peaceful agitation that started in 1973 against tree felling by the contractors. Chipko means Chipko means embracing Sundarlal Bahuguna. This movement is led by initiated by Sundarlal Bahuguna. Many women. Participated in this movement, Chipko movement followed Gandhian philosophy of peaceful resistance, and it was an uprising against the ecological destruction. Chipko movement, Chamoli flash floods are due to avalanches in the upper reaches and cumulonimbus clouds, which led to cloud bursts. Next issue is seismic map of India. This is related to Chamoli flash floods. Chamoli district. These are located in Himalayas. Seismic map of India means the areas which are vulnerable to seismicity, that is earthquake. Our Geological Survey of India publishes seismic zone map of the map of map of India. According to it, there are four zones: zone five, a very high risk zone; zone four, high risk zone; zone three, moderate risk zone; zone two, low risk zone. Earlier we had zone one. Which is no risk zone, but that is remote because every region is prone to one or other intense earthquake. That is why. Now this area, if you observe, Chamoli area of Uttarakhand, this is in zone five. That means very high risk zone. That is why any projects there they can lead to seismicity or generally the Himalayan region is fragile. So that can lead to seismicity, which can lead to more flash floods and other infra other disasters. Next issue is climate change resilience. So there is a discussion about net zero emissions. Net zero emissions means carbon emissions and absorptions needs to be balanced. Without that, climate change is going to have adverse effects. Yes, but as a response to climate change, there are various strategies. One such strategy is to build the resilience for climate change. What do we mean by resilience? Climate change impacts us on a long term and short term. In this context, resilience means ability of us to anticipate and prepare for and to respond to the hazardous events of the climate change. Improving climate resilience involves one assessing how climate change will create new or alter the risks as of now, and plan for managing the retreat and reorient the urbanization planning etc. Resilience includes response capacity, adaptive capacity and reorganization capacity. Adoption uh, leads to resilience to climate change. Next issue is National Marine Turtle Action Plan. Recently, our Ministry of Forest, Climate, uh, Environment, Climate Change has released Marine Megafauna Stranding Guidelines and National Marine Turtle Action Plan. National Marine Turtle Action Plan is to strengthen the collective and collaborative sea turtle conservation. This policy promotes the improved coordination among various government, civil society and other organizations. It highlights the actions taken for handling the stranded animals on the shore such as turtles etc. And it promotes the rehabilitation, restoration of habitats of these species. That is National Marine Turtle Action Plan. Next issue is regarding invasive species. Recently, red-eared turtles that are found in Assam, Assam water bodies are seen as a threat to the local biodiversity. Red-eared turtles are not native to India and Northeast is home to 72% of turtle and tortoise species. These invasive species, they compete with, compete with the local species. So they grow in more, they grow in number and local species, they because of heavy competition, they can't grow. That can lead to loss of biodiversity. In this context, from these invasive species, local species need to be protected. What are the what is the meaning of invasive species? Invasive species is an organism that causes ecological and economic harm to the new environment where it is not native. There are many invasive species in use. One is Charu Musil in Kerala. Lantana bushes in Nailgiri Hills, Indian bullfrog in many parts of the country, and this one red ear turtle. These are all in news. Next issue is heavy metal pollution in India during COVID-19 pandemic. 
IIT Kanpur study has revealed that during COVID-19 pandemic because of the government's efforts to reduce waste water from uh, industrial units and naturally as because of lockdown industrial units were closed down because of this heavy metal pollution reduced to half this reduced to half what are these heavy metals mercury cadmium lead arsenic nitrates these are some of the important heavy metals they cause various diseases for example mercury causes minamata disease cadmium causes ita ita disease lead causes anemia arsenic causes black foot disease nitrates they cause blue baby syndrome so when metals heavy metals and their concentration is less these disease incidents will also be less next issue is nanda devi biosphere reserve recently a portion of nanda devi glacier broke off near joshmat of uttarakhand shamoli district that has led to avalanches in the alkananda river system nanda devi biosphere reserve consists of nanda devi national park valley of flowers national park this valley of flower national park forms a transition zone between jaskar mountains and great himalayas mountains this nanda devi biosphere region it consists of alpine forests and orchids um, these are some of these species that are found there this biosphere reserve has rich fauna for example snow leopard black bear brown bear etc these are some of the species found there major threats to these ecosystems are collection of endangered plants for medicinal use forest fires poaching these are some of the threats to nanda devi biosphere region next issue is global energy transition index recently world economic forum has released annual rankings of global energy transition index in this index sweden has topped the index in the third consecutive year it calculates economic development and growth energy access and security environmental sustainability of use of energy based on these three dimensions uh, world economic forum gives this index global energy transition index and india is positioned at 74th rank for india gains have come from government mandated renewable energy expansion i india india energy outlook 2021 this was released by international energy agency india is the world's third largest energy consuming country with 80% of crude oil demands are met through imports and india is the world's second largest coal market with fifth largest coal reserves so in this context energy transition towards renewable and renewable sources is important for the sustainable future next issue is geothermal project in leh leh is a district in district in ladakh union territory there's an agreement for establishing india's first ever geothermal field development project in leh leh area this power project is known as geothermal field development project established at puga village of ladakh it is developed by ongc energy and ladakh autonomous hill development council power department of union territory of ladakh by the way what is the meaning of geothermal energy geothermal energy is the energy that is stored inside the earth's crust in the form of heat geothermal power is the geothermal power means electricity generated from the heat sourced within the earth's crust geothermal energy originates from the geological processes during the formation of the planet and due to the radioactive decay of the minerals from solar energy absorbed at the surface these three from these so three sources geothermal energy is generated and there are many so many areas where geothermal energy capacity is there as geothermal energy is renewable this can be sustainably captured and used next issue is asia environmental enforcement award 2020 this is given to wildlife crime control bureau of india every year unep awards uh, uh, gives the awards in the asia region for environmental protection in this context wildlife crime control bureau it, ha- it is given this award this year wildlife crime control bureau it's an intelligence and enforcement agency in the field of wildlife crime in india it's a statutory body Uh, under wildlife protection act 1972 it is the nodal agency for implementation of cites convention convention on international trade in endangered species next issue is fishing cat fishing cat population is declining 
that is the recent report fishing cat is highly elusive wild cat species this is found generally in the wetland habitations mangroves marshy land etc in india along the eastern eastern ghats fishing cats are uh, found there are confirmed records of fishing cat populations in sri lanka nepal india cambodia pakistan bangladesh and myanmar and it is facing threats due to habitat loss and intensive aquaculture is leading to loss of food threats from hunting for meat and skin and tribal hunting these are some of the threats to fishing cats and it is in the vulnerable status of iucn our last issue is black necked crane recently a group of buddhist monks they have protested against a hydroelectricity project in the tawang area of arunachal pradesh they say that if this dam is built if this hydro power project is built the grasslands are going to be submerged this is going to threaten the habitat of black necked crane black necked cranes are the, are considered a species species in among the populations in assam that is why they are protesting against it this bird is in the vulnerable category this is revered by community called monpas monpas it is revered as the sixth dalai lama in bhutan and arunachal pradesh it comes only during the winters generally it is found in the high altitude wetlands of tibetan plateau sichuan plateau and eastern ladakh that is why in ladakh they have recently declared black necked crane as its state bird right these are the issues of february month 2021 thank you very much all the very best